for an interview with the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. With me for this interview, Alexandra Branton from RFM. Mr. President, hello. Mr. President, uh, you welcome, I quote you, as an important step. A recent report by French historians, it was commissioned by the French president, Emmanuel Macron, and the report concludes that France had, I quote, an overwhelming responsibility in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. The French president is scheduled to visit Rwanda in a few days. Is this a watershed moment in the relationship? Are we on the brink of full normalization between France and Rwanda? To begin with, uh, with all we said, um, I think this is a, a big step forward uh, that is welcome by Rwanda and I guess by many in France that we can have these facts, the truth established by independent people, by independent commissions, because there is a report by uh, Duclat uh, and uh, another commission on our side by news. There is a convergence as to the facts and evidence for what happened that many people or really not many, but at least made a lot of noise, uh, disputed the facts uh, and evidence. So now we can move forward on that basis that we have established facts and evidence of what happened. And this is um, like history uh, uh, being put uh, to bear on the judgment of uh, the truth. Uh, and I think that helps people to move forward and uh, do the most important thing of how people relate, countries relate. And I think uh, France and Rwanda have a chance now uh, and a good basis on which to create uh, a good relationship as the case should have been. Uh, then the rest we can give it, leave it behind us. Uh, maybe not forget it, but forgive it and be able to move forward. I think that's the most important thing. So I think we, we, are, we are really moving very well forward. Mr. President, you talk about moving forward, convergence of facts. Now this report uh, concluded that France bears an overwhelming responsibility, but it does not conclude that France was uh, complicit. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that conclusion? I agree with the many things that uh, the two reports uh, established. Uh, and there, there is convergence between the two reports. Uh, the report by our side and the report by France. Uh, there are differences uh, that are important, but they do not uh, erase uh, the most important work that has been done of establishing the truth to a great extent. Uh, and I'm really not the one to make the conclusion. <laughs> if when a report left uh, some things uh, not concluded, uh, I'm not the one to make a judgment to say they should have said it like that because these were independent reports. Uh, and I think more work can still be done moving forward. But the most important thing has been covered. Um, and that is when you talk about the overwhelming responsibility, that is loaded. It's huge. It means a lot. Uh, so it's not up to me to conclude and say this is what they should have said or this is what it is. Uh, but it is something I can accommodate and say, okay, let's go with the most important thing that has been established by both. Uh, that overwhelming responsibility, uh, how to technically or legally interpret it is not really my, my intention or business. Mm -hmm. 
we say accommodate, but less than 10 years ago in an interview in 2014, you said France was not only complicit, but actively participated in the execution of the genocide. So what has changed between now and then? Well, as we were saying, we, we, we are talking about the reports uh, established or written by different commissions from different places. And for me, I'm entitled to my own opinion because I also lived in this situation. I was in it, and uh, uh, so. But I, so I said what I said. Uh, I may even believe what I said at that time, even now. But we are talking about independent commissions that went into whatever they did. Uh, whether they, and the fact that you say they didn't come to a conclusion one way or the other, well, that's their problem. It's not mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for me, I was speaking as a person who experienced the different things and who was in the situation, who saw, who had, who uh, interacted with many instances and people. So, but I wasn't making a report. <laughs> I was just free to, as a free person uh, describing and defining what, what I thought the matter was. Right. So I'm, I'm really not going to be uh, prejudging things. Uh, I'm not that person. Right. Um, the United States, United Nations, Belgium, the formal colonial power, have all formally apologized uh, for what they did or didn't do back in 1994. France hasn't done so. Would you like France to do so as a gesture of goodwill to build this new relationship that you're describing? All of that matter is uh, upon France to decide what they think is best for them. Uh, the worst thing I can do, uh, which I would not actually wish to do, is to ever ask anybody to apologize or to do this or that. I leave it to them. That's when it comes out honestly, genuinely, and uh, people. It's the world that judges. It's not just me. But, uh, but it would be an important gesture. I understand you're not going to call for it, but if it happens, you would deem it as an important I think. I think so. If, if anybody recognizes a problem and uh, says and does things about it, I think that's the best outcome. Right. Appro absolutely, I would appreciate that. Right. Mm -hmm. As you would appreciate a French ambassador going to Rwanda after years of not Yes, having... yes, we are, we are in a process of you normalization. Think this is on the horizon, I mean, very soon? I would wish that was the case. Again, that's a matter of France to decide. But I think it would be a good thing. And we could keep building the momentum of uh, a strong relationship. Now, sir, a few years ago, a um, Wandan Inquiry Commission uh, came out with a Mu the Mucho Report, which recommended legal action against some French officers um, who had been in Wanda in '94. Is this still the case today? Do you still would you still like to see legal procedure, proceeding against officers, French officers? I think the dynamics uh, keep changing. Uh, one thing calls for the other. What is constant here, there is always going to be reciprocity. If someone extends a hand to you, you extend yours. If one doesn't, you don't. I think what is happening today, you remember that uh, uh, Mocho Commission recommended that on the basis that actually there was an activity here in France aimed at indicting our officials or officers of the military. So it was more or less in response to that. I'm not talking about whether that should have been the case even before, but I'm saying on the basis that there was this effort from France to indict our officials, uh, and the commission had been underway to establish the truth. They also came up with this response 
of actually saying, no, it's not Rwandans who are responsible for this. It's actually these of individuals in France who are responsible. So there was that sort of reciprocity in terms of uh, enlightenment. That, that is the basis. So I, th I think so that's some of these things, I think the dynamics have changed. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of the change of dynamics, uh, the French foreign minister at the time, Alain Juppé, uh, recently uh, wrote an opinion piece in which he said that he regrets not doing more back in 1994. This is a man who, uh, when you previously came to France, said he would never shake your hand. Uh, do you think things are changing and uh, that you might shake his hands today? Well, I, I think that's from what I've just said. Uh, a moment ago, if somebody, it depends what is at stake. Um, what he said that time, if it has changed, I see no problem myself. I'm not uh, too prejudiced in many cases uh, and not to do one thing or the other. If things have changed, they have changed. Uh, I don't tend to be caught up and remain in the past myself. Uh, I always want to move forward. During your stay in Paris, you're scheduled to meet some French military officers who were in Rwanda in 94. Um, this is a first. Why have you decided that? What, what for? I think it's, it's a, in a way, a useful gesture for us to meet and just reconnect in some way, uh, even if it was remotely. Um, uh, because again of what is happening now, uh, when the, the two commissions did their work, they established uh, different things, including names coming up for attempting to do this or doing this. And so I, I, and the officers I'm going to meet uh, in one way or the other, uh, featured in this complicated history we had between Rwanda and France. And uh, I thought it was uh, a good gesture to reconnect in that context of history and uh, even for a moment, just on the basis of uh, what has been under discussion in those reports. Mm. Is there anything standing in the way of full reconciliation between France and Rwanda? For instance, uh, you still have the presence of uh, genocide suspects in France. A few months ago, uh, France uh, had Felicien Kabuga arrested. He was the financier, if I may use that expression, of the genocide. Does this signal in your eyes that France is really finally willing to go after the so-called genocidaire on its soil? Well, I think it's a, it's a good start. And maybe more could be done. Mm. Uh, so my perspective is that we can encourage more good things uh, to happen uh, if France is willing to do that. There are still uh, a number of genocide suspects here in France. Uh, whose cases have uh, not been handled the way they should. Mm. Or oh, there are genocide deniers who, who are here in France who still make a lot of noise and make uh, different things uh, difficult uh, or more difficult. Um, and yet the good thing is uh, in France here you have the law that actually punishes such a things like uh, genocide or Holocaust uh, denial. So maybe all of these tools should be put to good use uh, so that we continue uh, cleaning up the political environment that uh, exists between France and uh, Rwanda. Let's take a, an example, uh, Agatha Biarimana, uh, uh, the uh, former wife of uh, the uh, killed president. She is in legal limbo here in France. Would you like France to kick her out, extradite her? I mean, this would obviously be a very symbolic gesture. 
it's been hanging over the relationship for years now. For me, I really say it in a general terms and leave responsibilities where they belong. Uh, I, I want, I'm not going to, I mean, by the statement itself, uh, I think once France is willing to move in that direction as uh, prescribed, uh, I think we, we can continue to get things much better, whether Gata or other individuals, there are many here. and, and uh, as I say, but she would be an important one. You agree with that? She's this one of those. She's one of those. Mm -hmm. She's on the on the list. There's no question. On the long list, she's at, at the top. Mm -hmm. So, but France will decide what to do. Uh, I, I'm not going even to advise them what to do. I can only request them, maybe, and that should be done officially in the official communication. Uh, but. Um, I'm not going in any way to tell them what to do. I can only request them what to do. And, and I, I'm saying these people should be looked at. Genociders, genocide deniers, they are more or less the same, who operate and are active here in, in France. I, I leave it to France government and the judiciary to deal with. Staying with uh, justice and accountability, um, last month the Congolese Nobel Peace Prize winner, uh, Denis Mukwege, was in Paris. Um, he called and he asked France to help bring justice to those responsible of crimes in eastern Congo. Uh, some of them were committed by soldiers of the region, uh, Congo's neighbors. That's according to uh, UN experts. Uh, would you agree to have Wandan officers prosecuted for crimes committed in eastern Congo in the wake of the genocide? Uh, as you might be well aware, the mapping report has been extremely controversial uh, and in, in actual fact uh, highly disputed by uh, people, whether others in Congo or in the neighboring countries. Uh, it was highly politicized, and for a reason uh, uh, that, that is very complicated. We were talking about a while ago, let's say, in the report, and then what you say about responsibility, say, of France, and, uh, Rwanda, and then uh, the indictments, either Rwanda by uh, Rwanda, by Rwanda or French, French officials, or French government, or Rwandan officials. This kind of uh, process of politics, if you will, has uh, been, uh, or the underlying causes have been uh, huge, Contaminants, the, 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 you know, the contamination of it in the region and in the Congo is, is huge uh, and goes global. Uh, and of course, the, there are these things that are hyped and brought up. I think Mukwege uh, becomes just a symbol or a tool of. Uh, these forces you don't get to see, and he's, he's made a, a Nobel laureate, and therefore he's told what to say, and, and that will influence people's opinion, and so on. So it's, it's a, but it is highly controversial, it's highly disputed, and uh, I don't think it can, and, and by the way, there are also other reports that uh, dispute and say the, completely the opposite. Um, the opposite? That there were no crimes committed in the region? There were no region? crimes, yes. In the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo? Uh, absolutely. And not by the individuals either talked about or by countries talked about. It's like, it's the, it's the theory of double genocide that mm. uh, is playing out here. It's like the people, the, the, the genocide that was carried out in Rwanda against the Tutsis is something that has uh, 
heard vibrations going across mm. the world and about the responsibilities and so on. So, and it has turned a full circle and it's like people are saying, no, no, but these are not the only ones who die, mm. even the others. Mm. Uh, and therefore, there were two genocides and then it comes from Rwanda, it goes to Congo. Then, so it, it's such a that even the truth, the actual people who died or who were uh, uh, or who killed them, who did the killing, will never come out because of this intoxication mm. of fighting to establish two genocides taking place. That, that's what I'm saying. In the east of uh, Congo, the security situation uh, continues to be very bad. Some say it continues to deteriorate. Uh, the Congolese uh, government has uh, decreed a state of siege in two areas, Ituri and North Kivu, for 30 days, maybe longer. Is this a good move? Do you agree with it? It is a good move to begin with, but that alone is not enough. It's what is done following the decision that is also equally important. Uh, because the Congolese military's record is not great, so I mean, put them, them in charge is maybe not such a good idea. Yeah, but you see again, these are some of the things that uh, distort the picture. Here we talk about the Congolese uh, military not uh, being fully in charge or not being the best. But we have also had the UN forces and the UN from outside for now 24 years. So talking about the Cong Congolese military not being the best or good in any way, and then forgetting the fact that you have actually, the world has put a force there, not only and that force that has been put there for the last 24 years spent 1.5 billion US dollars. So you calculate how much. Surely those people who do that need to be saying, well, this has been the outcome. You know, we got value for our money this way. Nothing to show for it. So, this again, and it is the whole background of that situation in the region, Congo, what you have just talked about, this happened, this happened, but there are still these responsibilities of the world that are kept, you know, silent or put on the ground. And nobody says, yeah, but what have you been there for 24 years? You went there to solve the problem. What happened? It's a failure. I think it's a big, big failure. It's an understatement to say it's a failure. So our region has, has seen many overlapping complex uh, issues and problems and which the whole world just prefers to give uh, uh, a remedy like that of you no know, naming somebody, you know, so like uh, Mukwege has been in, given in a better area, probably to bring to solve problems of Congo. <laughs> but <laughs> we are still stuck whether with him or with the UN force, with <laughs> everybody. And then once people have come to such a failure, they just find it easy and as if it's, it's like, uh, and then they pick up some individual, this one did this, this one did that. No, but <laughs> there is this so much that has been put here uh, to address the problem and we still have the problem. So the, I think the, the state of emergency for me, it, it was like saying, there is a big problem here. Let's take, uh, measures that give us a good start to deal with it. This is why I'm saying it's one thing to establish the state of emergency. It's, uh, for me, I would do that if I were. But I would follow it up also with a well thought out planned actions uh, to actually deal with in, in concrete terms, not to come and run over things again and then after five years, you still have the same problem or even a much bigger problem. That's what has been happening in, our, in, our, in the whole region, not just Congo or 
Kong, of course, having a, a bigger share of the problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, your, to your question, I think it is a good move, but you still have to do more. Mm -hmm. It asks us to do more. Now, talking about doing more, um, your country and Congo seem to have better relationships since President uh, Chisikedi was elected. Uh, you've both agreed to reinforce security at the borders between the two, the two countries to, to tackle rebel groups that are operating in that region. How far are you in these talks? Um, are you talking about joint military operations, for instance? We are still talking about it. First is to identify the problem itself, how far does it go, and um, um, then plan how to move forward, which are the most important steps to be taken first. How do so we, we are still having a good discussion. But the most important thing here is at least there is that environment where we can talk to each other, which was lacking before. Uh, and then always people working together, they will find the solution. It's when people don't work together that they will, and that has characterized the past as we have seen it. But joint military operations could be invested. That is, I guess that would not be uh, out of the question. Uh, but it always depends on uh, the situation at hand and what people see. Mm -hmm. Always the two sides will talk and see if that is going to work, uh, what are the costs, or what are the benefits, and uh, a decision can be made. I think here people need to be flexible. Because mm -hmm. you know, UN experts are saying that Rwandan troops are already intervening in the DRC and already conducting operations um, mm -hmm. at an exit. Yeah, but I wish they could go beyond that mm -hmm. and ask themselves, meaning the UN, why would Rwanda have to go to Congo at all when they are the ones responsible for the situation? But does that mean that you're acknowledging that Rwandan troops no, are in the DRC? No, I'm acknowledging that uh, the UN making that report is actually a failure in the Congo. That's what I'm They're talking failure. about. Yes, total failure. But so are Rwandan troops in, in the DRC as we speak? No, if we were there, we wouldn't be failing. I, I assure you, we wouldn't fail to deal with the problem. Uh, President Shisekedi also made a surprise announcement recently. He said that Kenyan troops would be sent uh, to uh, the region. There are also reports of Ugandan troops. Are you in favor of uh, foreign countries sending uh, their troops to deal with this security issue in the east of the DRC? There are already foreign troops in DRC. As foreign as the people who come from 10,000 miles away. I'm talking about the UN. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's not... <laughs> so it's enough for... Is this so, so I'm saying if you are looking for, for foreign as, as a big problem, we, we already have a big problem because uh, what does somebody from 10,000 miles away know about the DRC? But we have them there. That's one thing. Second, I am for DRC being able to make a decision they think is appropriate and act upon that. The DRC should be able to make its own decisions. They should have the freedom to do so. If they want to work with their neighbors, I think, why should people see that as a problem? Mm. Whichever neighbors they want to work with, whether it is uh, Uganda, Rwanda, Angola, Congo Brazzaville, Zambia, Tanzania, Burundi, there are so many neighbors of Congo. If they want to work with them to deal with a particular problem, they think one country or the other can help in, I think we should all welcome it. And, and uh, again, for me, the issue is, once they've done it, let's see what the results are. Let's the, judge them by the results. I'm sure they would do that, expecting to address the problem, not just for people to come and create another problem. So I think it would be a welcome idea. I would, I mean, to first leave it to DRC to make their decisions, and we accept that. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
but, uh, but stop this whole thing. It, 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 this is what I was saying. You have a UN uh, MONUSC in DRC for 20 something years. You have troops from different countries, from Asia, from Latin America, from different, from Africa, from, they are there. They've been there for over 20 years. Why are we talking about this problem? Where pro one country is doing this, or if you no, know, will you allow this country to come in? No, but tell me what these ones are doing. The same people who are reporting against any neighboring country being in Congo working with the Congolese government are the same people who have forces there for over two decades. <laughs> so, and doing nothing. So, why don't we first answer that question? I, I mentioned in passing Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't attend the swearing in of uh, President Uveri Museveni. We mm -hmm. understand there are tensions uh, between your two countries. What is up between your two countries? Why this bad relationship and why is it getting worse? We, to, dis, to describe it to you to the extent that you would understand it would take us a whole day. So <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to summarize the. <laughs> But what is true is we have had misunderstandings, I would have, and we have even had efforts to try and resolve them. Uh, but things may not be working. But you know, Rwanda has had many problems. We have had our own, which we try to deal with. Uh, we would keep struggling to improve our country, to make it better, to take it to greater heights. But at the same time, we suffer uh, from being a small country. Uh, and uh, those who think are slightly bigger than us uh, think that uh, we should be getting matching orders from them. Uh, and, and we we are also good at telling people that uh, they should leave us alone and we, we, we want to grapple with our own problems and manage our problems. We, we can work very well with the people, but we don't want people to give us orders or to shape us the way they want, mm -hmm. whether it is uh, Uganda or even bigger countries, uh, those who think they can tell us, you do this, this is what is good for you, do that, or you must listen to me or because of this. And we are very polite people as well. We tell them politely that, no, that's not going to happen. And then uh, sometimes people want to force it to happen. And that's where problems come up. So, but we are always looking forward to resolving whatever problems we have with anybody, including Uganda. Or like you, you have seen how we are making good progress with France. Why not with Uganda or any other country that we may have some problems with? So that's the way it is. So coming back to Rwanda and your internal problems, as you mentioned them, mm -hmm. um, Paul Husesa Begina is mm -hmm. currently on trial in, in Kingali, and he's charged with nine counts, including uh, terrorism for his alleged support to, the, to mm -hmm. an armed uh, armed group. He claims that uh, he never condoned uh, violence. Yes. One, uh, he's not alone, by the way, in the trial. There are 20 something people who are being tried together with him. They were together in committing the, these crimes against the Rwanda and the Rwandans. They are all appearing in court. And in fact, and some of them, a uh, few of them, are giving overwhelming evidence against him because he was their leader. And they produce this evidence in court. Now, there is what he says. He may deny a number of things, but two things. One, there are actually things he said publicly that even implicate him, that confirm what these other co accused are saying about him. Such but they came from him. Such as? 
or when he publicly said he's going to make sure that he unseats, brings down the government of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And when an interviewer, there, there are these uh, tapes about him. He hasn't denied even in the court of law. They said, are you the one who's saying this? He said, yes, because it is obvious. So, and when he was talking about that and talking about his being a leader of some of these organizations. So how, how does really one, uh, how do you say uh, this man is innocent? Mm. And in any case, let's assume he's innocent. Mm. What is the problem with him becoming innocent in the court of law? Mm. The court of law will decide on this. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why people make a lot of noise. He's, he's in court of law. He's not just being you know, hidden somewhere under arrest. He's in a court of law, like many others. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you were saying, why do people make a lot of noise? Also, I think probably because the way he was arrested. I mean, yeah. he says he was tricked into coming to Rwanda. And What's wrong with tricking a, a criminal you're looking for? Into? Well, if he is a, yeah. If he was suspected. tricked, if he is suspected, right. Mm. If he is suspected and is tricked into availing himself. Now, the, the, the next step is when you get him, where do you put him? If it is in the court of law, mm. I think that's, that's okay. Well, the US, the EU, others have expressed their concerns about him getting a fair uh, trial. When they say this, they suspect that this is actually not the case uh, because of the way he was tricked uh, and uh, because they don't think he will get a fair well, trial. If, I if, mean, you, you have to be concerned when you hear this. Sure. Well, the US, or, I, I don't know. Most, I think what we are calling the US or EU is just what uh, his wife or his daughter are saying or doing, and they go tell people all kinds of lies. Well, the governments make their own judgments as well, I mean, when they say this. So when they say what? Because I don't even understand. They're calling for a fair and transparent trial, I which am, means they suspect he's not getting one. I am calling for fair trial against him myself. Hmm. So it's not UK or US or, 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 or European Union. No. I want to see a fair trial myself. Mm. Why do you think being fair belongs to Europe or US or anybody, not to us? Why? This is how people, you see, end up being caught up in some of these useless things, and they end up being racist. It's like the only thing to be fair in Rwanda or in Africa, it has to be supervised by Europe or, or, or US or, or some other place? No, mm. absolutely not. I, I am for fair trial myself. That's why he's in the court of law. Something else could have happened to him if we were just people who do things anyhow. Yes, but he's in the court of law. So why don't people respect our processes? Well, maybe the concern is because um, several think tanks or organizations have accused your regime of, of suppressing um, all type of dissent. And I'll give you another example, the one of uh, the arrest of uh, the gospel singer, Kizito Mihigo, um, who became a critic uh, of your regime. He was accused of inciting hatred, and he, he died in, in police custody. Um, the official version is suicide, but human rights organizations are doubting that. Yes, I, I can't decide what uh, human rights organizations believe or not believe. For me, I rely on facts. But there's concerns that... The concerns will be there. But who tells you I don't have those concerns mm. myself? But everything is cleared through investigation and through the court of law. So would you accept a probe? They're calling for an independent um, investigation. Independent what? You mean we should always be having independent investigation for things that happen here in Paris or in France. If, if somebody dies and somebody comes up and says, no, 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 this man was killed by, by the police or by yeah, somebody. So should we always have independent investigation to find out the truth? Mm. Or you are saying, no, your countries, 
don't deserve that or don't really have to be believed until we have validated it. Is that what is being said? Mm. Yeah. What would you answer then to those who accuse you of not allowing political space for, for the opposition? I'm not responsible for the opposition. No, but they're saying you're not That's allowing not my them business. to exist. How? How can I stop them? Mm -hmm. How can I stop them? How can you stop them? Yes. How no. do I stop them? By we, going after them? No, by actually having a bigger following than them. Mm -hmm. That's how they get stopped. It's not me who stops them. Mm -hmm. I'm not responsible in any way. No, I don't, when we go for elections, I don't go campaigning for the opposition. I campaign for myself. <laughs> That's none of my business. So, you know, you can accuse me of all kinds of things. But if I want to turn around and accuse you of, of what I think you should be accused of, what do you say? We were talking about earlier about the problems between France and Rwanda, right? Which we are trying to address. So which means I can have a number of things I am accusing France of, or UK, mm. or US, or you think that, no, these are above reproach. You shouldn't be talking about it. They can only talk about you. But uh, again, this is what I was saying. Uh, some of us don't accept that. Mm. We just, uh, to finish, Mr. President, you've been head of state for 20, for 21 years. Mm. Um, the next presidential elections are in three years. Yes. Will you be running? You know, above all, uh, I wish God continues to, me, to give me good health, right? That's at a personal level. The rest of politics, Rwandans will decide, and maybe I can also decide personally can decide even when Rwandans uh, say, no, we still want you, that is something important. But I can say, you know what? I feel I need to be, go and do something else. But for so this, there are many things I can do. I can mm. just go home and rest, read the books, maybe write some things, recollect what has been happening in my life, and the things that I have gone through and what my country has gone through. This, this, is, this is a whole occupation that would make me busy. Uh, but for whether I'm going to run next time, or to, sometimes when I'm asked, and I've been asked this question many times, I find it really irrelevant. Why should people be interested in knowing whether you run or not run? This is uh, the affairs of my country. The rest are just uh, bubbling. They, they, I don't. <laughs> why, why should I listen to anybody asking me? Are you going to be doing this tomorrow? Okay, I, we'll I'm see. I'm a free person. I will do whatever I want, mm -hmm. and I will do whatever my people want when I. That fits my moment. That's it. I, I don't. Uh, I don't uh, run my life in. in According to media questions or reports or <laughs> human rights, this or what, where they say, no. Uh, I think uh, we have had enough of this going around forever, but uh, we, we have to live our lives. We have in the country, we have to live our politics, we have to live uh, as free people who want to operate with others, and that's, that's where I am. Mr. President, thank you very much for thank agreeing you. to this interview, and thank you to our listeners and uh, viewers from uh, France 24 and RFI, Radio France International. The U.S., when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 10%. The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We, the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. 
There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. They think getting rid of a president will take care of the problem. Far from it. That president is just going to be replaced by another one who is going to equally suffer from the same difficult environment to work in. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation from outsiders. The multinationals who are stealing from Africa every day in broad daylight. I use an example of the DRC. If you ever fly very low over the DRC, you'll see tarmacs in the jungle. You'll see 747s flying into DRC, picking up minerals and flying right out. The same multinationals are responsible for arming young people and giving them MK-16s. Because why? Their satellites in the skies are telling them where that village is. There's, there are lots of diamonds. So what do they do? Arm young people, drag them up, and send them to go chop off a few heads. The rest of the village runs away, so they come behind and do their illegal mining. We black people must understand what is really going on. Because what we are shown instead is, oh, look at those Africans killing each other. There are some serious games that have been played in Africa for far too long. And once we understand that, we can strategize as to how we can begin to bring the difference and bring the change that Africa needs. And that change can only come if the African diaspora are united and the Wakanda villages, as I call them. It is our organized way of saying, starting with one African diaspora center of excellence, it will be a new city, a developmental hub that we can then take from there Every sector is developed. Take healthcare. How many doctors do we need in this region to take care of this many people? We pick up education, same thing. We pick up engineering. We pick up electricity. How many megawatts of power do we have in the region? How many do we need? Be it solar, be it wind, be it hydro, be it geothermal, be it nuclear. We were singing, when you were singing, the masters of the field were coming. We Uwarian boys are coming. The masters of the field are coming. We Uwarian boys are coming. To win the race, to win the race, we trust in God, we trust in God. To win the race, we trust in God. And that's for, God. And and that's for Opoku Wari. Masters mm -hmm. are coming. Masters are coming. Mm -hmm. Masters are coming to win the race. Oh, 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 oh. Masters are coming. And then they will sing, Prepare the world, yeah, 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 yeah. Prepare the world, yeah. Then we go more, then we'll keep quiet. Mm -hmm. Then we will sing, ah, uh, when they tire, then we'll come in. Mm -hmm. Diplo, Owens, Diplo, Owens, are we the We have to win the race and take a cup. We are the masters of the field and best athletes, famous to all and decent boys. How would you prove? Then they will start. I've been quiet. I have a eye. I have a eye. I have a eye. I have a eye. Hello, I'm going to go to Kofi Quarantini. Nane. I love you. I love you. I love you. Kasana. Ya Kasagana. Ubi Arika. I love you. I love you. I love you. Ni e levy because e levy problem no a e yes simple now Ghana government is on person or tiasse in tine a bet so much then no what tiasse ye a was your for 2020 IMF ma Ghana one billion dollars billion with the B same year no World Bank ma Ghana 430 million dollars nina for covid e we e chi no in 2021 no imf for some magana 1 billion dollars bill 1 billion with a b na world bank for some magana 130 million dollars in 20 to 2021 no say 1 billion 130 million yeah if he world bank buy any imf buy no no we say post covid Rejuvenation program say what be ma yang economy no so into no World Bank ni IMF this is Ghana ma Ghana Ghana government call Bank of Ghana ko yi twenty billion cedis say COVID in T ne abu chia fu World Bank ama mu two billion IMF ama mu two billion 
World Bank Amamo 560 million dollars for COVID. I know on some Musan call Bank of Ghana could you 20 billion cities say COVID in tea. Say she can we move home content train yet. And I won't move. We move yet. Baby, I will be for Ghana. E levy tax, who call ports are e levy, who call airport, who call hotels, but what they are to to be beer as or Ghana, e levy, e levy, e levy, says he can hen alpha, petrol, e levy, who call union or port, e levy, says he can hen alpha now, in this a ne government a person or tray and say Ghana for a beer yard, you know, in your jumentina or de sa e levy nearby, yes, you perceive a tray government to say. And you say, I do in your jumo, ye who never cosono, ni a jay a mano. If you say, who per se, wunya, ye levy, young, ye are responsible citizens, ye and per se, ye, 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 stand by, ye, jina hockey car, ye, train fire, or no, okay, say, yes, ye are responsible citizens, right? Into ye are responsible citizens. Nana tenna say, so who per se, would free sika, not would ye be beer. Because young credit rating record former, and yet young abra bought now the e levy barber to so. I think because there is over three, almost three billion Ghana cities a record to the presidency. Three billion Ghana. In it also by seventy five percent. What also by seventy five percent? I will say by three hundred and seventy five million dollars. Three hundred and seventy-five million save and not at the presidency. You don't need three billion Ghana cities going to the presidency. Then now what are you, Mr. Kufuado? Any near Koso war presidency? Then now Mudi Sikani a presidency ho. Mudi ye then Mudi Shu Sruku and now then now Mudi ye. Legislator, leg Ghana legislators. You have two hundred and seventy-five legislators. Then now our legislators no what ye magana. Say, say, minimum can say, hey, Ghana fui. You bet me, Afa, I install it, Watson. IBM computer, our friend is Watson, no? Ah, a hey, artificial intelligence. Ah, hey, hey, nine, over 90% of young parliamentarians, no? You bet me, I replace one with Watson. Watson computer, Ben Wedjuma. Now, you downscale. I then hear 275 parliamentarians out. Then, why am Ghana? One liability to Ghanaians in a year over 100,000 cities every month per parliamentarian. 100,000 cities. And what was the judiciary? Judiciary, hey. America, yeah, 330 million people. 11 times the size of Ghana. Ghana, yeah, 30.8 million. America were nine Supreme Court judges. A Kufuado Banan saying, Ghana near what ten Supreme Court judges? A Kufuado are twenty eight. I can hold. It is say say Ghana thirty a, a country of less than thirty one million people. No, yeah what eighteen Supreme Court judges. Then ne how young eighteen. Then na I think young na just a kronge we be asking na Ghana ne wunti ye here Supreme Court judges. Then ten ye what Supreme Court judges? A country of less than thirty one million. 18 Supreme Court judges. Ka, ka, one Supreme Court judge, Biano, liability, April $150,000, dollars 150000 cities a month. Kona ko ne V8, all the them, ne bodyguards, ne, ne driver, ne, ne, te, ne krone ba, den inti ni yafa an extra eight Supreme Court judges. And un kwan cheng, se si ya menemo ka se, ya wo 34, eh, eh, wo friend den, uh, 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 ambassadorial post around the world 34 Vatican City ah e wo room kra ye wo ambassador wo ho den na ambassador wo Vatican City ye magana mon kan kire ye nge aden ye wo ambassadors wo be bit say Malta nom ne eh wo friend den Sri Lanka se eh Sudan nom ne ade den o come no ye ne ade buy ntin ye wo ambassadors wo Sudan it doesn't make any kind of sense so we will read eleven. What is this? Yes, some were uh, fifty-eight uh, uh, diplomatic missions around the world. Diplomatic mission, no. Anka hum fasone se wo wo trade deska. Eddy income, commerce, bre Ghana. So diplomatic missions around the world. They are fifty-eighty. Sika beng wo de bre Ghana. Mung kanchere yeniere. 
a year crong waste of money and resource. Musi mo hufe e levy. Ye betchira mo say e levy no monko na monko yi infi mo amut futum. Positions na mo create a hun ninfa sono and hon na monko yi infi. Adeng na mo how Ghana for sa MPP for. Deng na Ghana for ye munti na de bia ye nchi ya se ye nchi ya se no. Sa positions si na ye wish. Hey, over 2,000 executive positions are wo executive benefits ne perks. Wo to kwang wo business class wo nya four by four no mani adi. Sa ni mani ne si wo yi fi ho ana what also. And no no be ma eleven no income from eleven ye be nye fi ho mroso mroso mroso. Deng ne se se ye kachre e kufwa do ne wo government. Se sa de no munko yi yi fi ho no na mo boka gana foka unnecessarily. Na mo be we yi ne we na excavate sa unyangu kwa do mi yense yense unko ka. Ni yen nang na nien fan yesi ka nien fan tu yen yi levi kason. Mwa be ka chen se mwa kwa shiwe excavators 85. Excavators a bako ye over 150,000 to 200,000. Mwa sa kwa shiwe na ka hon. Na pa no no wehi ye zi. Kop no wehi, ti no wehi ya anom. Kop no so a wa abona ka hon. Hey, e kufu ado en his government. Why? Gana fo. Yen penende en penechna. He left you know one hour yes, but she one hour no wa quite free scan was up. Yam pen in a lay walk when eh eh eh. Yam no more barbecue. You be jinam the name and say yam pen pen. The kufu ado and his government. Adeng adeng. What say when cluelessness meets unpreparedness? No MPP infoni now be home ho. Yabram, we not gonna take this. We not having this. Mumfa yam pen ne yam pen china. Eleven years here, Munko inko cut legislature, Munko cut executive, Munko cut judiciary. Nasi can ambassadors any were friending ambassadorial post any ye diplomatic missions. So many many now Mun cancel now Mun reduce now Mun for computers in your head. Legislature say you want two hundred seventy five. You know you bet me the drone, drone I replace one. You here 275 at the maximum four per region. You here 64 parliamentarians. You here 211 parliamentarians. No, where your liability to Ghana at about 100,000 cities every month. You in Chawungu Fiho. Come on, enough of this nonsense. You rim. You rim. I want you wedding class symbol. Okay. Okay. So when we are the class symbol of knowledge. Strength, adaptability, <laughs> energy, freedom, unity, hope, peacemaking, harmony, intelligence, Continue. power of love, strength. Said in class symbols, when you are a boy, 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 you are it's a free nerdico. So I didn't class him. We who spells him, you know, yeah. I can't class him. Also, the president is now a free nerdico. Who spells him, you know, yeah. I can't class him. Also, photo and I didn't class him. Both of you, you are a failure. You are a failure. You can't make it. 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 You can